Oh wow, what a great review I just watched for the BU Mini. That's the retro handheld I'm gonna get. Oh, um, it looks like they're all sold out. Or really, really stupidly expensive. Well, that's annoying. Everyone's telling me to get a BU Mini, and I can't actually get one. What the heck should I get instead? If only there was a video I could watch that would explain the best alternative to the BU Mini. Oh, this is that video, apparently. Cool. Hello there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome, and look, I get it, you're frustrated. Me and every other tech YouTuber made a video about how great the BU Mini is, how it's an awesome size, how it plays games great, and Onion OS makes it even better, and it's adorable, and it fits in your pocket, and now you want one, but they're sold out all over the place, and you can't find one at a reasonable price, and now you're disappointed, and sad, and frustrated, and angry, and hungry. Well, I can uh, help you with one of those things. Can I... Can I make you a snack or something? What can I get you? How's about I whip you up one of my specialties? A techweeb peanut butter and banana sandwich. Or as I like to call it, a TDPB&B. When I was a kid, my mom would make me peanut butter and banana sandwiches for my lunch every day. This was back in the 80s, when you could still send kids to school with peanut butter, before all those kids with peanut allergies died. There's something special about eating the foods we grew up eating. It feels like a warm hug. Like seeing an old friend. Like coming home. Uh, what was this video about again? Something about, uh, retro games. Oh yeah, right, the, the Miu Mini, and how I have one and you don't. Well, don't be sad, buddy. I know they're hard to find and you really want one, but here's the thing. The Miu Mini isn't magical or anything. It's good, and I like it, but it's not like the perfectest, most amazing handheld that ever existed or anything. There are lots of other retro handhelds that are really good. Gr great, actually. And I'm gonna make the case that if you're dying to get a BU Mini, you probably get something else and be just as happy. And that's what this video is about. The single best BU Mini alternative that you could buy. Today. Right now, in fact. At a reasonable price, that'll bring you just as much enjoyment as the BU Mini. One of the most common comments I get on any any video I make with the BU Mini is about how people want one but can't get them because they're sold out. And that's understandable. Uh, when we look at the BU official store on AliExpress, we can see that th th there's nothing. They're sold right out. Everywhere else, you should be able to buy this thing sold out. And when we search on AliExpress, we can see that they are in stock at several stores, but they're like three times the price that they should be. Do not pay $150 for this thing. I, I know you want one, but, but trust me. It is, as good as it is, it's not worth over $100. Come on now. Yeah, the official Miu store might have them in stock again at some point, and if you're quick and lucky, you might be able to snag one up before the rest of the hungry retro gamers out there gobble them up. But, like, you are aware that there's other retro handheld emulation devices, right? You're not? What? Well, it's a good thing you found me then. So if you're in the market for a Miu Mini, there, there's one handheld that I think is pretty darn close. It's about the same size and shape, it plays all the same stuff, more or less, and it has a custom operating system that's about as snappy and responsive and useful as the Miu Mini's custom operating system, Onion OS. Uh, wh what's that? You want me to quit wasting your time and freaking get to the point of the video? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I'll get right on that. Let me introduce my new friend, Scarzak. Scarzak is a pterodactyl. Pterodactyls lived in the late Jurassic period, 150 million years ago. Their fossilized remains have been primarily found in Bavaria, Germany. Like all pterosaurs, pterodactyls had wings formed by a skin and muscle membrane stretching from its elongated fourth finger to its hind limbs, and a wingspan of 1.3 meters. Scarzak wants an awesome new handheld. He's experimented with retro handhelds in the past, he has an older retro emulation device, and wants something newer and better. He watched my review of the Miu Mini, he clicked like and subscribed, obviously, and now he wants something about the same size and shape as the Miu Mini, something that'll fit in his pocket, something he can play on the couch, or in his bed, or while sitting on his special toilet made for pterodactyls, something with all the conveniences as a Miu Mini. Uh, really, he, just, he wants a Miu Mini, but considering that he can't get one, he's willing to get the next best option, as long as it's good. Well, Scarzak, for you, I have the Amblernic 280V. The Amblernic 280V is an excellent premium handheld that will satisfy retro gaming newcomers and seasoned veterans alike. It has a high quality, solid build, and a brushed metal style front plate. It's of a size that makes it comfortable to play but still be entirely pocket friendly. 
It's powered by a 4770 dual 1.0 gigahertz CPU that can handle everything up to and including PlayStation 1. And it has a unique dual SD card design with one 16 gigabyte SD card for the system files and emulators and another included SD card pre-installed with games. The 2100 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery allows for seven hours of battery life. On the front of the device, we have the usual D-pad, A, B, X, Y buttons, and start and select. The buttons feel very good on this device. They are more clicky than most devices like this and a bit on the stiff side, but during gameplay, they feel very snappy and responsive. I like them a lot. Around the side of the device, we have the reset and power buttons, which can also function as the menu button, dual SD card slots, volume up and down buttons, and on the top is a USB-C charging port, headphone jack, and some stacked shoulder buttons. Many reviews of this device complained about the button layout, but I didn't have a problem with it. Once you get used to the placement of your fingers, it feels very natural and comfortable. The screen is an OCA laminated IPS display with a resolution of 320 by 480, and it is a very nice, bright, high quality display. The colors are vivid and the majority of the systems you'll be playing on this device scale nicely and look sharp and crisp. You know, these videos, they never do the screen justice. <laughs> you gotta trust me on this. The screen looks amazing in real life. It's like three times as crispy as it comes across in the video. The 280V has no problem playing pretty much all the games from the classic retro systems. It can even handle the vast majority of PS1 games with no problem at all. Even the harder to run PS1 games can still be played and enjoyed on this device by, by enabling frame skip. Basically everything you could play at the BU Mini, you could play here. This was the first of the cheap, small, pocket-friendly retro handhelds that I've come across that could handle PS1. And that was the main system that I played on this device. And the best part about the Ambler Neck 280V is that we can install a custom operating system called Atom Image, which provides a beautiful front end with game thumbnail view, improved emulators and performance, and useful shortcut keys that make getting into and out of your games a, a, a breeze. With Atom Image, this device reaches its true potential. It's easy to install if you follow a helpful guide, hint, hint. I also made a tutorial of how to download the thumbnail images and box art for your game library, and Atom Image uses RetroArch as the backend for the majority of the systems, so you get all the flexibility and customization that RetroArch offers. And of course, I made a guide to RetroArch on these devices. There's links to these videos in the description below. Coming in at 65 bucks, it's not the cheapest handheld on the market, but it's pre Premium build and quality components and stellar performance make it a good choice for anyone willing to pay more for a superior emulation experience. This was my favorite handheld before the BU Mini came into my life. And coming back to it as I made this video reminded me why I liked it so much. I really think that this is the closest next best thing to a BU Mini. And some of the features on the device itself and the Atom Image custom operating system are better than a BU Mini, in my opinion. You are not getting a drastically subpar experience by any means with the 280V compared to the Mini. It's just a little different. All right, Scarzak, I think the Ambler Neck 280V is a great device for your needs. But what do you think? Ha <laughs> ha! That's right, Scarzak. The 280V is a solid handheld with great performance, and even though it's more expensive than lots of the cheaper low-end devices, it's still a great device for the price. So you should go buy one if you want one. I'm not giving you this one, though. This one's mine. Ha <laughs> ha! Alrighty, we're done with you, Skarzak. Done for good. Ah! I should mention that there are loads of other uh, options. I was considering doing a longer video showing you like three options, but I decided to be to the point because I really do think the Ambler Nick 280V is the next best thing to the BU Mini. My other options were the POW Kitty V90 as a, as a low end entry level option and the Retroid Pocket 3 as the high end option. You guys know, I, I love those things. They're, they're, they're great devices for the price, but they don't satisfy the same exact use case as the BU Mini. The only device that I have that does this nearly perfectly is the 280V. There are other devices too, of course. I don't have every retro handheld known to man, like most of the other tech reviewer guys. This is amateur hour over here, as you might have noticed, but I do watch a lot of videos about these other devices, and I read a lot about them, and I buy what I think are the best ones. There is a jungle of other devices out there though. I'm not gonna be able to touch on most of them here in this video, but if you really want to get nerdy about this stuff, if you're not aware, check out the other YouTube channels channels like Retro Game Corpse or Wolf Dead or ETA Prime or Wicked Gamer. You know, those guys who review every freaking device that comes along. They can fill you in on the ones I didn't bother touching on if my information wasn't good enough for you. And that brings us to the end 
I really do hope you find a, a BU Mini, if you really want one. It's my favorite device, and I love it to bits. But honestly, there, there are so many good handhelds out there, I, I don't think it's worth waiting endlessly for the Mini. If you need a device, just, just, why, just why wait? Just get the next best thing, you'll still be happy with that. Well, I hope you found this useful, or at least entertaining. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Have you been dying to get a BU Mini? Are you going to hold out? Or do you think you'll consider a 280V? Or do, do you have a different suggestion for a BU Mini alternative? I'm curious what your next best option would be. Let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Check out the link to my Patreon in the description below if you'd like to support the uh, th things that I do. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye Holy crap.